All right. Hey, did anyone We're know live. the stream was being live streamed? <laughs> <laughs> I heard that somewhere. It popped up on my screen. They're I think. watching you. <laughs> All right. Hello, hello, right. world. We're here. Yeah, yeah. So this is this is our first uh, Ask Us Anything live that is centered around a challenge. So we are in the beginning throws of our three cards, three continents challenge, and we're staggering the starts a little bit. So Nick took off yesterday. Um, and so he is somewhere in the world. And maybe we'll get some hints during this, <laughs> this ask us anything about where exactly he is, but uh, none of us know. Well, I shouldn't say none of us. I think Carrie knows. Um, and Nick <laughs> might know, but that's uh, we're unsure about that. Questionable right now. <laughs> Questionable what I know and what I don't right now. I I, I, I arrived somewhere in the dark and uh, ended up somewhere dark. So I don't know. I'm not sure. It could could have dropped me off anywhere. But uh, <laughs> But yeah, so I think it might also be our first Ask Us Anything International Edition. Is it? Uh, because of the, like, have, have we had... Have we had anybody overseas for an Ask Us Anything? Didn't you, did you do it from the Gareth last year? I feel like Greg may have been like the season. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, possible. Maybe. maybe. All right. But know. maybe it was domestic, false, but false alarm. Mm. False alarm. All right. So, <laughs> so here we are. We're live taking your questions if you got questions out there. But so, yeah, I took off yesterday. So if you've been watching the story, you saw some of what I did. But if you've been watching Reels, like I just was a little while ago, you might have seen Steven showing off a sweet little suite to get things going for his trip, which is not part of the trip, to be clear. This was a positioning place, right? It, it is, yes. So yeah, it's the Hyatt Regency JFK at Resorts World, which it was funny because I'm catching up on the podcast episodes at the moment because I've been a little behind and I just checked in here and the one that I um was and somebody talking, told you, hey, Nick Reyes is going to be here in a few award weeks. Award booking adventures where you mentioned that you've got it booked for at the end of your trip. So, <laughs> yes, yes, I'll be there eventually here. So just FYI yeah. for you, they do have a shuttle here, but it's not worth taking. Just get an Uber from um, the airport because <laughs> it was way too much hassle um, <laughs> getting my way around just to take the tiny, like short journey for the um, for the shuttle. What made, what, what made the shuttle so difficult? I'm sorry? What made the shuttle so difficult? Um, well, you have to take the air train um, to... So like federal um, how, circle? Well, um, so I took the air train to where it said all the hotel shuttles are, but it turns out that that's not where the Hyatt no. Regency is. So I then <laughs> got on the air train again to get out to Howard Beach, but I got on the wrong one and it went to Jamaica. So I had to go back to... Oh, Benham, no. Then oh. back to Howard <laughs> Beach. <laughs> and then you have to... Um, pay 1075, so it's like eight bucks for the air train and then 275 for a subway ride to yeah. Aqueduct, which is what's on their website. But it turns out there's two Aqueduct stops. Oh, no. And <laughs> the one that I got off wasn't the correct one. So I had to then get another um, subway ticket to get to the second one, only <laughs> to have the shuttle bus be right outside the station. But it was one waiting to pick people up later. So he pointed me down towards the other end where I just come from which is pretty much where the first station was. So <laughs> I ended up getting on there only for it to then drive up the road like two minutes. So all in all, it probably would have been a similar cost just getting an Uber from the airport. And I would have gotten there about two hours earlier. So <laughs> it's totally not worth it. Oh, good yeah. to know. That's a great door, to know. Door to door, how long did it take you to take the short, convenient shuttle to the Resorts World? <laughs> um, okay, so I think I got off my flight at like... 2 15 2 30 or something got checked in at about 5 p.m maybe i'm um, all like 4 40 <laughs> yeah it was like 4 45 5 p.m so yeah it was just really i'm guessing you didn't check before. bags that was, <laughs> it wasn't like a delay waiting for anything it was wow. just uh, wow. wow but at least i know for tomorrow that i should just go back to the airport via um uber or i might actually suffer through that again things i'm gonna have like several hours to kill but I, might, <laughs> I think i'll still do the uber anyway just so i can get to a lounge even earlier so. oh my god uh, yeah fine next I'm next fine. time just take the short the short route and uh take a connecting flight to dc to dc and stay at a hotel there yes. <laughs> right you could do that <laughs> wow um, so how about the, the TWA hotel there? It, it, that's in like one particular terminal, right? Or connected mm -hmm. to a, a terminal? 
I can't remember which terminal it's connected to and whether, would that have been an option for you if it wasn't crazy expensive? Um, potentially, yeah. I, I feel like there's been reviews that have said it's not all that great and then they charge if you want to use their swimming pool and things. And also because my flight's not until tomorrow night out of JFK, then staying at the Hyatt Regency means I can get a 4 p.m. late checkout so I can um, hang out here until as late as possible before going back to the airport so I can get working on stuff, which will be handy. But assuming that you're flying out of like Terminal 8, which is my guess, you could eat for free at Bobby Vans. You're not you're not flying out of Terminal 8, huh? Uh, let's see. Is this you <laughs> just um, fishing for information? About which I'm okay, I am not flying out of Terminal Eight. Oh, okay. I tried. All right. So, uh, <laughs> so never mind on the Bobby Vans tab. Okay. So, uh, so, so I mean that's smart. Four PM late checkout makes sense. That's certainly been uh, something that, or is something. So I, I, I think to. we should let our master of ceremonies uh, start asking <laughs> questions. There you go. We got him. <laughs> Ask him if you this, got him. This is not called donut ask us anything <laughs> um so we do have one question uh still waiting for more so anyone has questions out there please feel free to submit first I one there's at least one new one on the post as well oh, okay um, so cool it's, it's definitely worth checking there um in the meantime uh do you have any details about the chicago seminar that you can share so uh, chicago seminars uh the dates are have been announced and the and number of the speakers have been announced. Um, there is a flyer talk thread that has those details. What, what I think we're still waiting on is, is the actual ability to book it, which yes. <laughs> <It> hasn't <laughs> gone live yet. Uh, but to find the flyer talk thread that the post I did about my speaking at the Toronto, um, what is that called again? <laughs> the Toronto summit or something. Um, in that post, I link to that flyer talk thread for Chicago seminars. So th that's a way to find it. And we could share that in the, I'm in the to, comments um, here. Add a link to the flyer talk um, thread on Facebook. So that'd be great. Do you, so Thank what you. about what we're going to talk about, Greg, do we have any idea what we're going to talk about yet? Cause that's the one thing. Well, we I'm assuming we'll talk about our, our trips, you know, and right, what right. we, what we learned, give, give an overview of the, the, uh, exciting parts and uh and the scary parts and the sad parts <laughs> i don't know hopefully about end what on kind of trip you're hopefully, planning greg hopefully end on a happy note with everyone <laughs> yeah. uh well uh speaking of the trips uh, i do have another question that just mm -hmm. came in that relates to nick's trip um this person says nick envious of your pyramid tour how did you find a reputable guide also, is Egypt just a stopover where you're not spending the night? If yes, uh, what did you do with your bags? All right, so let me go in reverse Great order question. here. What I did with my bags is I carried it. Uh, so this is it. This is like everything is in this backpack. So uh, everything I'm going to need for the whole trip right there. So I carried it. That's what I did. Uh, and the, so the the company I went with had a driver. So it was a driver and a guide. And so there were some stops where I just left it in the, most of the stops. I just left it in the car with the, the driver who sat in the car with the stuff. So uh, so for the most part, it stayed in the car during the day, although I did bring it out with me a couple of times. Anyway, um, so that was the easy part. Second part was uh, how did I find a reputable guide? Well, I, what I did was I just, I poured through reviews. So I ended up booking through Viator because I knew that I could get 15% cash back through Capital One and prices were pretty similar. Uh, it going directly through the tour operator's website, you had to submit for a quote. They didn't actually have prices. And so I knew I could book something and I knew that uh, if I booked it through a service like Viator, that at least they are conscious of the fact that I might leave a negative review on Viator if they don't do a good job. That's at least what I'm hoping when I book through a service like that. So anyway, I went through lots of reviews there and Google and TripAdvisor going back and forth. And this one particular company had, I think, five stars average on Google and like 4.9 on TripAdvisor. And there was one specific review that came from somebody who said that they are a travel professional. They work in the industry. So they're very picky about the service that they receive on tours and things. And they said this was a rare situation where their expectations were exceeded, that these guys really went above and beyond and did a great tour. And that review meant more to me than others because it seemed very legitimately written by a real person and somebody who I 
I got the sense would know the difference between a good tour and a bad tour. So, uh, so that's how I picked the company I went with. They weren't the cheapest company that I could have gone with, but at the same time, it wasn't expensive. I don't have the email in front of me right now, but I'm pretty sure it was like a hundred dollars and I got 15% cash back. So it was 85 bucks, including the driver. Uh, and they picked me up and dropped me off back at the airport and, and the guide for the whole day who took me around. And I was really impressed that it wasn't just like some random guide. I, they say it's an Egyptologist. And I talked to him and he said that in order to get licensed there, you need to spend four years studying. And so he knew like everything wow. about everything, it seemed. And, wow. it, and it seemed legit that he knew like he was telling me what the hieroglyphics meant. And there was enough consistency in the stories and some of the symbols that we saw no. again throughout <laughs> the day that I realized either he made up a really elaborate story or he actually knows what he's talking about. So, uh, and I think he actually knew. So it was actually a lot of fun. I'd um, do it again for sure. How long, how long was it from beginning to end? They picked me up at the airport at five o'clock in the morning. So there was somebody there as I got off the airplane. So before immigration and everything, there was somebody to guide you through that whole process, help you get the visa. And then they bring you to the car. So very, very simple and seamless. So they picked me up at five o'clock in the morning and uh, dropped me off back at the airport at, I want to say it was about two o'clock in the afternoon. So oh, wow. uh, yeah, wow. so it was you know, a, a good long time and, and nothing is open when I got there, of course. So they right. took me to like a hookah bar with coffee and we had coffee and they bought me sandwiches and we just sat there and talked for a while before stuff opened up. Uh, so that was all very cool, very good. And I was also impressed. I booked this in the afternoon at, a, it was like 11 o'clock local time in Egypt. And within 10 minutes of booking on Viator, they called me on WhatsApp wow. uh, to get my flight details and you know, confirm what kind of customizations I wanted to do. And uh, I was impressed from beginning to end. They did a great job. Wow. Well, I'm guessing uh, we'll have a lot of Nick themed questions since you're the only one that's truly I'll be shorter uh, about most of the answers. Route, <laughs> uh, but there is another question for you here related to the challenge. Um, Nick, did you ever have problems with putting more than 6,000 into a Roth IRA with the Schwab Platinum? And the reason I, I say that's related to the challenges, because isn't that one of your draft picks? It is one of my draft picks. Okay. I didn't end up doing it is the short version of the or uh, short answer. I didn't end up doing it. I know people who have who haven't seemed to have any problems. I think that Tim, accurate? you've been doing that's, it, right? I was yep. waiting for Tim to pick that one up. <laughs> yeah, so there's a, and, and it's, and it's effectively, it's been actually confirmed. I mean, you know, I always sort of, you know, we're not tax professionals. So let's, let's mm -hmm. say that right now. But, but in terms of the actual, um, both Schwab and uh, the Schwab reps have confirmed that from their end, and I have confirmed it on my tax documents, that a Schwab contribution is not considered a cash contribution. So I have, I have, and I tested it out by, by last year, by actually doing a full $6,000 cash contribution, then adding Schwab on top of it. And in terms of what was reported to the IRS, it was only the actual cash contribution. None of the Schwab contribution was. So effectively, That's amazing. yeah, it seems to be pretty much free and clear. So for people listening who don't understand what, what we're talking about, uh, it's basically when you have the Schwab Platinum card, you can cash out points at a, a favorable rate of uh, 1.1 cent per point to a Schwab investment account. And if that investment account is a um, IRA, you can actually go beyond um, the IRA limits because it's not it's not treated like a normal contribution that that is subject to the normal limits. And and we should note that there are some readers that when I wrote about this, and like I said, I ended up doing it, I ended up just cashing out to the regular brokerage. But there were some readers that commented that say that they are tax professionals and thought it absolutely should be, you know, taxed and that that's not correct. Or, you know, that interpretation isn't correct. And then, of course, you know, I had talked to the CPA who said, no, it seems like it's fine. And uh, so I, I, I we should be clear that we don't know. Uh, but I, I haven't heard of anybody having any issues with it yet. Yeah. 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 Um, all right. Well, fascinating. Thanks, both of you. Uh, next question. What is your favorite credit card going by the way that it looks <laughs> and feels? <laughs> is this so outside not perks, just the part? way it looks and feels. <laughs> What's that? Is it outside of it? Is this except for the Liverpool cardless card? <laughs> well, I still don't know what that one looks like. I've never seen that one. <laughs> Who does? Who does? <laughs> I, I love that Carrie introduced this this uh, question by saying, 
to the previous question. That was fascinating. It <laughs> <laughs> was really cool, guys. <laughs> Taxes. <laughs> Always fun. <laughs> what, what, what more can excite a crowd than taxes? No, it's it's fine. Fine. <laughs> you can tell when the graphic design is bored by the tech stuff, but then is really excited by Sorry the about the right, right. So, so, so I actually have a have an answer to this, um, it, and it, it's kind of funny because it's probably my least favorite card for its features uh, right now. But the 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 curve card um actually like has a notch? a curve notched out of it and and i like that and and uh a lot of times when i hand it to like a waiter or something they're like oh wow that's cool i haven't seen that so it's it's been a while since i've gotten that kind of reaction you know it it's been a few years since uh like metal cars cards have have uh been of interest to people so it's a it's a new uh new gimmick but uh on the flip side curve has all kinds of sort of anti-features that uh, make it <laughs> frustrating. <laughs> right, right. Sort of anti-features. Agreed. <laughs> what about anyone yeah, else have it, a favorite? It's like the Maryland state flag to me, the curve card, unless I got a different yeah. design to you guys, but it, it's got that kind of like yellow, red, black, white kind of thing. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, well, it's but, got like the red, black, white thing going on. Yeah, I don't know about yeah. yellow, but. Yeah, I can't oh. remember. Yeah. Um. So sounds like uh, you guys have less interest in the design of cards than I do. So we'll move on to the next question. <laughs> or maybe there just aren't that many interesting looking cards. I, I guess there. I should say my favorite uh, designs are the ones that Carrie made of our cards that we <laughs> right, right, right. Oh yeah, Nick. These are my favorite credit card designs right here. You can't really see them. Okay, yeah, go on to really. the next question while I try to do the <laughs> hand uh, So next question, this one should be either really easy or, or I suppose maybe not. Uh, favorite lounge in Atlanta? Haven't ever been to one there. Really? I, um, okay, well, I think, well, I, I think the, the only one that I've been to, I think it was the club in yeah. one of the terminals. And as absolutely packed priority pass lounges go, I didn't feel like it was terrible. Like it had, from what I can remember, had a fairly good drink and food selection, I think, but it's been a few years since I was there, but um, but it was absolutely heaving when we were there. We were lucky to get a table just for the two of us um, in the lounge. And so I just, and that was a few years ago. So I imagine now with even more people having priority pass that it's probably even more packed. I don't think I've ever flown on Delta through Atlanta when I've had a platinum card. And so I, was never able to take advantage of Sky Club, or I did have one and my wife didn't or something like that. And so didn't really want to pay the extra 30, 40 bucks or whatever to have her come in. Um, so yeah, I think the only land I've been to there is the club. Um, isn't Atlanta the airport? I feel like every time I fly through Atlanta, they're the ones that have lines just like all the way down the terminal for the like one or two restaurants that are open. For some reason, the staffing shortage is just like more noticeable there. I don't know if that's if you guys have noticed that, that too. That sounds likely to me. Uh, I've been um, to uh, the Sky Club in Atlanta, and I would never do it again. Uh, <laughs> you would rather it, stand in the line it, for the Chinese it was, restaurant? It, it's, like, it, it's sort of like um, going to a cocktail bar that's the size of a phone booth with 40 people inside. <laughs> very big, big man. It was, and I've, been, I've actually heard that the crowding has gotten a little bit less, but the last time I was there, I have never been to such a packed lounge there was literally no seat there was no i mean yeah 15 there, people there's deep lines at the bar i mean it was crazy right there's a few there and if i remember right the the, the one i've been to a couple times that is awful um it had like a, a section that was like elevated a bit over the yeah. other section but um only one had like food that was accessible or something I, I don't know i just remember really hating the whole thing because right. i guess i oh i remember i was dragging around a suitcase and then you have to go up <laughs> steps like just to get to where the food is and yeah and of course you're 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 pushing your way through crowds yeah it was bad <laughs> um so i'm not sure this next question makes sense so you'll have to tell me if we need to skip it for another uh this person says speaking of the curve card did it ever show up on your credit report I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think it did either for me. No. 
I mean, I've certainly never gotten any notifications from Credit Karma or anything like that saying that anything had showed up. Um, so I'm assuming that um, Curve isn't reporting. Yeah, it's hard to know because, um, the, you know, we got it while it was, and I think it might still be under beta uh, and um, they might not be doing, <laughs> you know, during their beta testing what they'll be doing once it's officially released. So we don't know for sure. I don't think Tim was I, laughing I, I at the data Tim test. <laughs> so, Tim, do you want to read that next question for Stephen? Well, the question is, somebody has properly ascertained that Stephen's accent is actually not real. It's a fake <laughs> accent. <laughs> and so what I'm curious is, I want to hear Stephen's real accent. <laughs> well... I, I can't do other accents. I've tried before. Can you do an American that's accent? Really ridiculous. And what's even more weird is we just spent the last month like back in the UK and Ireland, and I got told that I sounded American. And <laughs> I, I don't feel like I, I mean I could I have been it might just be because I say things in an American way now, but I feel like I still have a British accent. So you do, I you don't do. Know. Like, <laughs> I, I, I sound like me to be, but who knows? <laughs> I'll leave it up to your judgment. Um, so next question. Uh, this may be a strange question, but have any of you run across people who accompany slash transport pets on a plane for a living? <laughs> wow. Um, I oh, haven't. Um, I have a friend who's I used I, that I, service. I've though. definitely seen someone before mention that they've actually that they've um, brought back rescue dogs. I think it was oh, yeah. somewhere like from another country. Yeah, as like part of an organization or something. So they've gone on vacation and teamed up with this organization. The organization, I think, takes care of the paperwork, and they just bring the dogs back um, with them. Um, but I can't remember who it was. It was in some kind of Facebook group where I saw someone mention this a while ago, but I don't know who. So there's definitely that kind of thing out there, but um, I don't know anyone myself. So this next question is for me. Um, this person asks, since you know everyone's itinerary, which trip would you choose to stow away on? <laughs> mm. That's a great question. <laughs> it and is I, a good one. I can't actually explain why I'm, I would choose this person's itinerary, but I think I would actually pick Stevens. Oh, and I'll just let you wait and see why. <laughs> is that because that bodes well for people hopefully liking my trip by the end of it. So. Yeah. Mostly because I, I don't want to squeeze inside Nick's, Nick's right. little bag. <laughs> <laughs> nothing else would fit believe me somebody tried to sell me something today and i was like look at my bag and no and there's nothing you have that will fit inside it but especially because then you'd be like up against his shirt that he's been wearing for four days right. Well. Right. <laughs> right. yeah that's that's that crossed my mind as well um, are you still trying to do the hundred days in that one shirt Yes. I mean, it's hanging right now because it was time to give it a rest so that it could, you know, like air out for the morning. So I took a shower, I hung up the shirt, uh, you know, I got into where I'm staying tonight. So, but yes, yeah, the, the Merino wool shirt. So I bought a Merino wool shirt that I, if you don't know what we're talking about, they do this hundred, this particular company does a hundred day challenge where you wear the shirt for a hundred days in a row and they give you a free shirt. So, you know, basically it gives me 50% off if I wear it for a hundred days in a row and take pictures. And, uh, so yeah, and you don't even have to post them to social media. I have been, but you, uh, you just have to upload them to Google drive at the end of it. So what day uh, are you on? Uh, 17 or 18. I, I, I'm you got not a sure. While ago. Yeah, I do have a, a December 3rd. <laughs> December 3rd is oh, wow. 100 days. <laughs> so it's going to get chilly in that short sleeve polo. By Anyone going to Chicago <laughs> seminars will uh, see you right. then. You will see me, but you can wash it to be clear. You can wash it. You don't okay. have to wear it. You oh, don't have okay. to wear it without washing it. That's what I was um, <laughs> But it doesn't, I mean, I like, I, I had it, it was 90 something degrees in Cairo today. And I went to hang it up and I was like, it doesn't smell like I've been wearing it all day long. Uh, like I feel like I feel <laughs> yeah, like you know, like, <laughs> that's just because you don't have a travel companion. Yeah, maybe, I think maybe. you need an independent uh... <laughs> verification on that, or I'm yeah. gonna take some videos tomorrow. Hey, do I smell? Uh, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so this next question I think relates well to the challenge that we're doing. Also, 
Um, how do you guys balance redeeming airline and hotel points versus transferable points? Do you try to first spend down airline and hotel points before touching transferable points? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I do. Um, so <laughs> if I have a lot of, um, you know, particular airlines points, for example, um, I will often be willing to spend a little bit more if it costs a little bit more than uh, using transferable points transferred to something else. So for example, I, I have a ton of United Miles um, because of trips that were canceled uh, a few years ago. And so, you know, a lot of trips that I've booked lately, rather than, you know, transferring points to, let's say, Life Miles that might have been cheaper, I've just booked out of my United account because I'd rather spend down the United miles than uh, make my transferable points less valuable by sticking them in, in, cause it would be essentially like transferring my, my transferable points to United. If I, if I, uh, I you know, uh, did transfer in order to book stuff. So, um, yeah. Because you'd be transferring in order to keep your United miles, basically, right. right? So that's what Greg means when he's saying, yeah, I mean, it would be a silly transfer to make. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, unless it was a huge, huge difference, right? So right. like, right, of course, it, yeah. you know, and, and I have done that. So like when, um, you know, if, if there was a flight for like 7,000 miles versus 25,000 with United, I'm going to go with the 7,000, even if it means transferring a few miles. But if it were 20 versus 25. Then I'm going to use the United, United, miles. United miles, right? Yeah. Okay. So I don't know where the line is. There's a line somewhere. I was going to line say somewhere. Is there yeah. a flip side where you would actually prioritize doing transferable. Like, is there? Have you have you ever chosen to actually use the transferable currency, or what? What? What point is that? Is it that kind of fudgy dividing line where you'd actually choose the transferable currency over the? Yeah. Um, uh, that's a great question. I, I'm not sure. I mean, I I think um. I don't know. I, you know, it's 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 not a formula I use, and and it gets complicated by some things because United's one thing where I'm happy to spend down the miles, but like take Alaska miles where they can be so incredibly valuable for certain specific things. So if something came up where uh, where I could use Alaska miles or the equivalent number of transferable points, um, I. I might prefer the transferable points and keep those Alaska miles for the more incredible value opportunities in the future. Right. Right. That's a really good question. Um, well, I'm going to roll things along. Um, next question. <clears throat> what is the best way for miles uh, and not many taxes and fees to get to Italy uh, with a follow-up point? Uh, I am in the Chase silo and never been in the Amex silo. So what are the recommendations for an Amex first timer? So maybe we want to do the second half first and then talk Italy tickets. Are they asking Amex recommendations for Italy? Uh, I'm, let's treat it as two separate questions, I guess. Okay. Although possibly. <laughs> I, I guess if Amex has the best partner for Italy flights, then um, certainly maybe. Definitely, maybe. All right. So your best option to get to Italy, if you don't want to pay a lot in taxes and fees, off the top of my head, is going to be using uh, probably life miles, right? I mean, that's uh, you don't want to pay a lot in taxes and fees. That's probably going to be the best bet, especially if you've got any kind of economy leg in there somewhere. Uh, and that's going to be flying a Star Alliance carrier. So you're going to have to connect somewhere. Uh, the other option that comes to my mind quickly is Iberia, but that's not going to be low taxes. And it's going to be like not bad leaving the United States, but not as low and, and a little bit more on the way back. Um, and, and you got to connect. So you'll pay for the connector separately, but it'll still probably be cheaper in terms of the number of miles than what Life Miles is going to charge you if you can find availability. But because there's so many Star Alliance carriers, I would probably be looking to Life Miles. So then, yes, you're going to need Amex points. And if you're asking what to get for an Amex card, I mean, right now the Amex Platinum card is still hot. I, I, I'd have a hard time, I think, looking at anything else because I think the 150K offer on the personal Platinum is back, right? Yep, it's back. Yep. Yeah, I mean, like that's a round trip in business class like nice. at the top end price. And if you hack it a little bit with an economy connector here or there, then 
you may be able to get three people one way. Well, that's a great answer then. Um, I think that knocks out both of those questions too. Uh, so next question, if you ask Amex, another Amex question, if you ask Amex for a retention offer, will they consider if you've already asked for and received a different retention offer on a different card? So not on the same card. Uh, correct, on a yeah. different card. So if I understand the question correctly, I think that's that means that will they do, will you get offered retention offers on multiple cards? And that's, that's you will, yes. Like so getting a retention offer. So if, if I had to like, for instance, if you were to ask for retention and get a retention offer on an Amex Platinum card, and then you went back and asked for an Amex Gold or an Everyday Preferred or whatever else, a day later, the, 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 the Amex Platinum referral offer will not affect the set there, whether or not you'll receive a retention offer on the second card. Agree. Yep. Nice. All right. Switching back to the competition here for a second. Um, how will readers vote for the winner of the trip? And can you please remind us of the things each of you did uh, somewhat outside of the rules? I recall that Stephen resold a gift card for cash and Nick used incremental bonus points for a booking. Um, hmm. Thoughts? I'm not sure what that means about what Nick oh, did. Maybe but... about Nick's one. Transfer bonus? No, I mean, the only thing I can think of is we talked about how, uh, and I do intend to include this in the end budget, but I don't know if it came up yet in anything, uh, is that we talked about how fine hotels and resorts booking, because you get the 5X right away on those, we talked about being able to use those points. I thought, right? Uh, uh, the, yeah. So maybe that's, that's the only thing that I can think of. Otherwise, I can't think of uh, what they mean for me. But anyway, let's say um, somebody want to hop on the answer. Yeah, the I mean, I think that's a good idea that at the end we um, we come up with a way to highlight not just what we all think is why to vote for us, but also like list out clearly like the things that were maybe questionable I, i'm not sure how how best to say that but and, and leave it for leave it for the voters to decide uh, Stephen did use a fake accent whenever he was booking, <laughs> which I don't understand actually well, preferential treatment uh, totally within the rules <laughs> how much have we how much have we talked uh to listeners and readers about the kind of activity budget versus like the way that we we set up that thousand dollar budget Starting and we it. probably haven't talked in much detail. I feel like we've kind of just quickly gone over that. So Greg, yeah, you... probably not enough. Yeah. Um, so the, the budget that's set up with the draft and everything um, is completely for travel alone. So it's, it's doesn't include food. It doesn't include um, uh activities that that you want to do um, but it does include like if you need a visa to get into a country um it doesn't it does include a taxi to the airport um and it includes any lodging that you have to pay for um so so uh yeah i mean i think that's a good point so we we are doing we are going to be doing a lot of fun and exciting things or i have faith in in uh <laughs> that Nick and Steven are, and I know I will be. Um, and um, a lot of that won't be in the budget of the challenge. It'll be the separate activities budget, which we intend to, you know, report, you know, here's how much we, sp we spent to do these amazing things. But, um, you know, we, we don't expect to be, um, I guess, graded on that aspect, really, or it's not, it, there, you can't bust the budget basically on that that, that part of it. I and we did it, that because everybody. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, Carrie. Well, I was just gonna say, observing all the itineraries ahead of time, you're each doing some of that fudging like kind of equally. <laughs> At least in my opinion, like you're each kind of like eh, doing some like activities, uh, like um, where you're kind of being convenient equally. I think. <laughs> Well, so so for the the first example of that would be my tour in Egypt, right? Because they they picked me up and dropped me off at the airport, so I didn't have to pay for a taxi to get somewhere, or a rental car, or whatever else, because that was like part of the tour. Um, so 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 that that's definitely where I guess I stretched the uh, 
the rules so far. I but I, I not necessarily stretch the rules because I like well, only would have gone to do it, I think, if I was doing it with a guide. So anyway, at any rate, we're gonna account for that. And the reason we didn't cap that is because that's something that like you could decide what you want to spend. Everybody's going to have an activity budget or a food budget of their own. And you would decide, well, what's reasonable to you and what's not. And I think probably each of us has tried to land on things that we think are fun and exciting and interesting and also reasonable. I doubt any of us is going to spend, you know, like $3,000 on an activity. But like, if you do happen to end up in Uganda and you want to see the gorillas, whatever it costs, it costs, right? Because if you're going to go there, you're going to go there to do and see that. So and that's a great um, example. That was kind of what we, you know, what we decided rather than capping something and being like, okay, you can go to Uganda, but don't you go see those gorillas. You're not allowed to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, uh, we decided to let that go. And it's not like a who can do the cheapest trip competition. That's not, you know, the point is to demonstrate an actual trip someone might enjoy doing. Um, well, and to be like, look, if we do all of this with three cards and a thousand dollars, you can do you know, just about anything. Sky's the limit, right? So you're probably not going to replicate my trip, at least. I don't know about Greg's and Stevens. You're going to be like, that's kind of crazy. I probably wouldn't do all of that in that short period of time. <laughs> but that's not really what it's about. It's more about showing you what you could do. And so with that as your like limit, then you can probably figure out what it is that works for you in between. I want to make sure we don't miss the first part of this person's question, though. How will readers vote for oh, the right. winner? I thought we got to explain that and we went right over it. Yeah. So we're going to create a poll that will be posted on the blog and we'll put out in social media everywhere, you know, links back to that, that post where, where you can um, vote and, uh, and there'll be like a cutoff time, like there'll be a couple of days or something that uh, where the poll will be open. Um, We expect to have embedded in that post videos uh, that each of us will create uh, where we we talk about why we think uh, you should vote for us. We also expect to have um, published, guys, correct me if I'm wrong about this, but I think we agreed that we would each have a post out that kind of summarizes our whole trip so that you know, it, it's it's really hard when, when even when following along actively to remember everything that someone else did. Um, so to have it all in one place, as uh, I think is pretty important as, as a way to, you know, really get a sense of each person's trip. So so we'll have posts out before the voting opens um, that that explains, what, you know, the whole thing of what we each did. And then uh, then you can vote. Yeah, exactly. And I think uh, it's it's kind of nice that we have just enough structure for people to know who, how to determine a winner, but otherwise it's up to listeners and readers how they want to determine the winner. So, uh, you know, we're not going to set too many, we're not going to over-engineer that side of things either, I think too, right? Right. You choose whoever you want to choose as long as it's me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can actually vote for me as well, even though I'm not traveling. <laughs> uh, so this one's not a question. It's just a fun note. Um, the, person who asked about Italy said the Italy trip was planned based upon Nick's recommendation of the Hyatt Hotel in Lake Como multi-night availability in June 2023. I just thought that was nice. Yes, Yes, that's Um, awesome. Somebody commented on the post to mention that a few weeks ago, and so I scooped some of that up myself. Oh, nice. Maybe you're competing. Um, So next question. Um, I know there are services for booking flight award tickets. Is there a similar service for booking hotel awards? or a full service provider who plans out entire trips based on points? I think that points pros used to do the entire trip based on points, like that type of service. I don't know whether or not they still do that with point.me now, because the, the kind of, I'm not sure whether that's something they offer anymore. I think they used to. I don't know what it costs. I have no idea what it costs. Does anybody know any other like hotel booking or full service I, uh, I imagine that there's probably some sort amex of travel will be happy to do that, it for but... you but they're not going <laughs> to do it for you the way that you want them to that's for right sure. right 
they'll, they'll tell you how many points it costs. <laughs> right. I had a family pretty. member who like he told he was he told me the trip he was planning and they told him it cost him like 10 million points or something. And he, he just wanted to go to like Morocco. And, and I was like, no, that's not how many points it will take. <laughs> so, yeah. So none that we necessarily know of. Uh, I know someone in Austin who does the full package kind of experience, although I'm not sure if they do it in the same way that this person means where where they just book the itineraries for you. Mile Method, I think is his name still. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of him, but I think he does something similar anyway. I may be off on what all he offers there. Um, next question, do any of the personal plat versions allow a second card? I'm not it's sure what this new. question means. I, Does anyone mean, mean, like, I'm, I'm assuming that they're referring to no lifetime language offers because yeah. this isn't as platinums. You could pick up more than one and get the bonus again. I'm assuming they mean is that possible on the personal platinum? Um, and I don't remember seeing any no lifetime language offers on the personal platinum. So in theory, no, but that's not to say that they're not possibly out there, or if you've had a platinum card closed long enough that it um, has effectively counted as a lifetime since you last had it, then you would um, be able to get the sign up bonus again, assuming that that's what they mean. Yeah, and to be clear, you, you could theoretically get a second card, but you mm -hmm. wouldn't be welcome. We wouldn't be able to get the welcome bonus on a second card yeah. for the personal platinum. Right, right. What about maybe an upgrade offer? So suppose you had the platinum oh, card yeah. and a gold card, oh, yeah. and then you get an upgrade offer. So then you could um, sort of like getting two bonuses for uh, your platinum cards and, and have two if for some reason you wanted two of the same uh, platinum card. That thought came to mind, but I hadn't heard of anybody getting an upgrade offer on the gold while they already had the platinum. I mean, it may exist. Yeah, but... I couldn't say whether it's <laughs> happened or not, but it doesn't yeah. seem like beyond what Amex would do. No, you're right. <laughs> um, all right, moving on. Any best practices for upgrading a work paid economy ticket to biz on my own points and dime? Ooh, that depends a lot on the carrier. Mm. Like there's just a lot of really disparate um, rules regarding upgrading paid economy tickets. And some it's, it goes from ridiculously impossible. I mean, it goes from impossible to, I don't know, what would be the best, like, so what would be a couple of the best options? I guess, to, let's reframe it that way in terms of upgrading. A, my understanding know, is British Airways. Is yeah, British Airways decent, is what right? comes to my mind. But um, is it I don't know. Emirates or Etihad? One of those has a good upgrade capabilities but i i just haven't done this so i in so long i just don't know well yeah. and, i mean even possibly british Europe. united just because when we flew from um new york to london last month um we had booked um just an economy but got up to like economy plus with um silver status but when checking in, they were offering the option to upgrade to um, business class. I think it was for 600 bucks one way per person, which was very reasonable um, upgrade cost as, um, as that kind of thing goes. We didn't end up taking advantage of it just because like, we didn't feel it was worth 1200 bucks total for the two of us for a seven hour flight, but 600 bucks to upgrade to business class from economy really isn't a bad price especially if your ticket in the first place is being paid for by your employer so i'm right. um, keep an eye out for that kind of um offer when checking in right. that's not always going to be an opportunity though because on our way back um from dublin to chicago they had a similar option but it was like two thousand bucks one way or something like that per person so it, the price yeah. is very greatly even with the same airline yeah. And to be clear about like the rules, some of them require you've booked like full fare economy. And like, unless you're very familiar with what that means, you may be shocked to see how expensive full fare economy is on. I mean, I was looking it up recently on routes to Japan in response to a comment somewhere. And it was like $5,000, the full fare economy fare from New York to Japan. It was like insane. So that's what you would need to have booked in order to upgrade with whatever airline it was. So. But, and I will say one thing now that Stephen mentions that, that's a good point. And um, I know that so, and there's some carriers, and I don't know, I, I have no um, 
memory like a specific list, but there are some carriers that you can actually request that at check-in, especially at the airport. And I know one of them is Condor, which is not a very, it's a crappy airline, but it happens to have a nonstop from Seattle to Frankfurt. So I, I've flown it several times. And the last time that in May, um, I was able to upgrade for 200 bucks at the desk when I was nice. checking and it just said, hey, was there any availability? <laughs> and I said, well, what would the cost be on it? It was like $225 one way, which for me was completely reasonable to move into a, even an angled life lab. But, and there are some airlines that, that won't send out the check-in that they don't have the IT to actually offer it at check-in, but you can request it at, at check-in. That's all right. a good tip. Uh, all right, I'm gonna roll us along here again. Um, retention offers for Amex, should one bother to request them for no annual fee cards. For Chase cards, Chase Sapphire Preferred doesn't offer retention offers anymore. Is that true? Well, the first the first part of the question is easy to answer. Uh, yes, it is worth asking Amex for retention offers for um, no fee cards. You, they do offer them. So um, City as well, they're, they're both good at um, offering retention offers for uh, fee-free cards. Um, Sapphire preferred, I have no idea. Um, yeah, it's worth a call. Like, even yeah. if other people have had no success, then yeah, certainly call up on the Sapphire preferred. But, um, I don't feel like we often hear all that many <clears throat> retention offer stories for chase cards, whereas we do hear them quite frequently for Amex. But that might also be just because Amex makes it so easy because you can do an online chat, so you don't even have to call them in order to do that, which I think probably puts some people off um, from trying to get those offers. All right, I have to move us along to this next entertaining question. <laughs> uh, if I get arrested while wearing a frequent Mylar t-shirt in Paris and it appears in my mugshot, how much will my royalty check be? <laughs> That depends on how widely published that picture is. <laughs> yeah, it, it also depends. It, it depends what you're arrested, arrested for. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why this person expects to get arrested in Paris. I mean, if it's because you're base jumping off the Eiffel Tower, then maybe at least fourteen eighty nine. We, we, you, you'll earn royalties in the form of more frequent Myler t-shirts. So look, look forward to that. Um, this is more of a, co a comment than a question, but I think it's interesting. This person says, I would love to have an idea of the number of hours each person spent on planning their trip, um, though it may be too late to have this for this challenge. But do any of you guys have a vague sense of how long, how many hours you've spent on your itineraries? Mm, lots. I mean, for, for me, I feel like mine was front loaded. So before we did the car draft, I'd gotten my trip pretty much planned out already, knowing exactly what I wanted to do. And so I'd spent a fair bit of time before the car draft researching my options. And then once we had the cards, then I booked, I got everything booked within like two or three days or something like that. And so it was kind of set and forget for me. And so I haven't had to um, worry about all of the things that Greg and Nick have had to concern themselves with ever since then. We're trying to piece together um, all of their itinerary. So I imagine that I probably spent more time before the card draft. I, but overall, I guess that you guys have probably spent way more time than I did overall. And I think that seems likely. It's it, from my perspective. It seems like Stephen, you spent about five minutes and you were done. I was done. <laughs> it's like I got nothing else to do. I'm done. It's like it's over, guys. I, I spent. I, I, it, it feels like you know maybe um, I don't know, four or five weeks of of like like the, of of full time work, but spread out over sort of the summer. Um, yeah, I'm curious though what you guys. If you were to compare it to our 2019 40k to far away challenge, did you do you think you spent um, more time now or more time then preparing? Because I'll say for me, I spent a lot more time on that challenge preparing. It was <laughs> it was a lot harder um, in in a lot of ways, and part of that was like you know figuring out well where the heck am I gonna sleep because I don't have any money left, you know that, <laughs> that kind of thing. And so this was easier because. Um, Oh, well, see, I, and, I'm totally on the opposite end of that spectrum yeah. because like that challenge, the constraints were so 
like strict that there weren't too many options you could pursue. Whereas with this, because you have so many points, I mean, three cards gives you so many points that like you can go anywhere. We talked about early on how any of us could go all the way around the world with the points that we have. And so when you can go anywhere, how do you pick where to go? You know, it, so I, I feel like Steven must have had a great idea right up front as far as like, yeah. I bet he's got a theme or something <clears throat> in mind that he wanted to do. And I didn't have that. So I spent a lot of time looking at, well, I could go here. I could go there. If I go here, what does that mean about how I'm going to get to there in the next place? And so I feel like I spent a lot of time searching availability and searching again and searching for final hotels and resorts and blah, blah, blah. And then, okay, well, if I go to this city, how much is it going to cost me to get from the airport to the hotel? And and should I go somewhere else instead? Blah, blah, blah. So I feel like that was a lot of time in hunting for the right awards and stuff because there was so much you know, the world is your oyster, so to speak. So I felt like I probably spent more time in this one. Almost yeah, not enough constraints on the one yeah. hand, but last time, maybe too many constraints. I, well, I don't know. I don't know if too many or what, but but a, a key point that I want to make here is when we made on the podcast recently, and I said, I enjoy this stuff though. So it, yeah. it's not like, like, I don't look at it like, oh man, it took me four weeks of work. Like, you know, Craig just said, uh, you know, four weeks of full-time work to plan this trip. I enjoy doing that. It's like, you know, I, that's what I like to do. I don't do crossword puzzles. I don't like, <laughs> you know, enjoy other things that other people like. I enjoy searching for award availability. So <laughs> I think that that's, you know, when you like this stuff, it doesn't feel like work really. Are yeah. you offering I, I yourself I, for making these uh, awards bookings? No, packages? I wouldn't want to do it for other people. <laughs> <laughs> that would be much less exciting for me. <laughs> the incentive is getting sim- to go on the trip. <laughs> I think I'm similar to Nick, though, in that I think I did spend more time on this trip than I did for 40K to Far Away. Um, be- and it was kind of helpful with the timing because we were in Nebraska at the time and we were in the middle of, we were in Broken Bone, Nebraska, when I was doing the bulk of my planning. And that was when we were staying at the brewery. So we stayed a week uh, on site in a two bedroom apartment at a brewery. And so there wasn't really anything else to do there. And so I was able to spend a whole ton of time um, throughout the week, just researching my different options. But like Nick said, I did come up with a theme of what I wanted to do. So once I had um, two key things that I wanted to do as part of my trip, then the rest of what I got planned revolved around that. And so then it was just much easier having something like that in mind rather than having kind of limitless opportunities like the other guys in theory have. So. Um, this next question I want to make sure we get to before we run out of time because I think it's important. Um, how are the co-pilots helping out on your trips? I'm not totally tracking what they are doing for Greg, Nick, and Steven. So does one of you want to explain that concept? Uh, sure. Um, so the, the idea is they're not really helping our trips. <laughs> what they're doing is, is uh, we, we had made the decision that, um, or the observation really, that, that Instagram seems to be the best place to tell these kind of live unfolding stories as they happen. And, um, and so we wanted to, um, benefit from from people who are in the space and and uh, friends of frequent miler who have who have a lot of experience telling stories to Instagram audience um, we want to benefit from their experience and and to be frank from their audience so they're gonna help us uh, share our stories to a wider audience than we could do ourselves because we, uh, as of last week, we had fewer than 5,000 um, followers at, at, on Instagram, um, which is pretty small for, for us compared to other social uh, media platforms. Uh, but, uh, you know, these co-pilots have a lot bigger audiences and they're both going to be helping to show us what to do to, to get better, but also sharing our stories with their audience. So it's gonna it's gonna help us get our story out to a lot of people. And like Greg said, I really feel like Instagram is the way to do it. Like I know some people are like, ah, oh, I'm not interested in this, you know, another social media or whatever. But if you look at this stuff on our Instagram feed, I just I feel like that's the way to follow this kind. We're gonna post stuff to the blog, but if you want to see what's going on and what's happening, like Greg said, it's just a much better medium for telling this type of story. Yeah. Um yeah, I would second all of that. Um, and we, you know, we like uh, 
we like engaging the community and some of these content creators are part of that community and we haven't for really sure. tapped into that community in that way before so it's kind of a fun experiment for that yeah. um so hopefully we, and have- we appreciate those co-pilots by the way thank you to oh, very much julia from GeoBreeze and angel from pennywise traveler and zach from monkey miles and and just from zach uh you know the, the thank you guys we really appreciate it yeah, shout out to all of them. And uh, I did tag them today on Instagram if you want to go check out their feeds. Um, I think we have time for one more question, then maybe we can kind of wrap up. Um, it's kind of a slower evening in, in terms of question flow too. Um, Nick, are you going to have any room for all of your amenity kits uh, and pajamas in that little backpack? Well, so I'm, I'm glad you asked. So, uh, so far I have squeezed the <laughs> Egypt Air amenity kit in my laptop uh you know area here so i have (laughs) squeezed one in so far uh and then my plan beyond that is that i have this t-mobile tuesdays backpack that i like i had mentioned on social media i grabbed for free on a tuesday and what i realized at home see like part of the reason i wanted the only one bag is a because i have to carry it around at times and stops where i'm not you know i have have another place to put my bag but also b because i am going to fly at least one low-cost carrier where uh where another bag would cost more so what i realized the other day was that if i put this on that's like yeah kind of the best way to do it if i put this bag on like this t-mobile bag like it's a drawstring bag i think i just put it on upside down that's why it looks so ridiculous around my neck but uh because i couldn't see what i was doing but i can put it underneath my backpack so i think i can wear both at one time and get away with that and give myself a little extra space so that's my plan for the amenity kits right now of course I don't know if that's going to work in terms of like liquids through security, uh, but so far in Egypt, they didn't care at all uh, that I had it when I went through security. So you didn't have to take anything out of your bag there. Um, and, you know, the next place that I arrived at didn't seem to take any issue with it yet. So we'll see. That's uh, that's pretty clever. Uh, I have a bunch of other questions I'd love to ask you, but it would give away too much about your itinerary, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go there. Uh, I'm, glad inst- you, I'm, I'm glad that you clarified as well that that was your T-Mobile bag that you had on upside down because it almost looked like a mankini that you were putting on. <laughs> <laughs> I promise it's the T-Mobile Tuesday bag. Yeah. So I want to ask uh, Stephen: are, are you going Nick's route of of wearing a backpack for for everything, or uh, are you do you have luggage with you? Okay, so I only got to pack up stuff last night because we just got back from Europe. So I had to go through, and we've been, um, we drove down through Indiana over the couple of nights and stayed at a friend's house in Cincinnati last night. So I, that was my first opportunity to actually unpack everything, repack everything that I needed. And it turned out I had way more stuff than I thought, or wanted to bring along way more stuff. So I have a hiking backpack and then I was just going to be bringing along a little backpack and have that rolled up. But it turned out that I didn't have enough space to only have that rolled up. And so I've got stuff in it at the moment because my biggest concern was a little bit like Nick. I'm um, on a, going to be taking a low-cost carrier at one point, but also I'm going to be taking a much smaller plane where I was concerned that I would be exceeding the kind of luggage allowance. So there's going to be like fewer than 10 seats on this plane. And so they Mm -hmm. limit how much weight that you can bring along with you um, in your bags. But when I checked last Mm -hmm. night after um, being concerned about all of this stuff, it turns out that I can, I'm just limited by weight, but I can have more than one bag. So um, I should be fine carrying two bags. So I've got my hiking backpack and then this other like shoulder bag can just rest nicely on my shoulder and I can carry it that way. So yeah. So that's I did I also end up bringing my Scotty vest hoodie that has tons of pockets. So mm-hmm. I I moved my electric razor into that when I put the Egypt Air amenity kit into this. So, <laughs> so that's coming. I'd like to already. see you just like filled with amenity kits. <laughs> yeah, well, you awesome. might. <laughs> might. <laughs> there may end up being just a little bit. Uh, the best we'll see how it goes. You need we'll like a fishing vest for all of them. You know, I, I'm I glad you it. said that. I hope my wife is still watching this because <laughs> there's this whole story about a fishing vest. So I hope she's still watching. <laughs> and my biggest issue was whether or not to bring along tennis shoes with me because most of the places I'm going to be, it's going to be warm. So I was just <laughs> going to rely on flip flops. But there's one place I'm going to be where it it's going to be a bit cooler. But even then, that would be fine. But I'm just more concerned about the weather where I'm going to be and what I'm going to be doing because it might get muddy. And so mm. I didn't want mm. to... 
like be traipsing around <laughs> in this really right. muddy environment in flip flops. And so <laughs> what I did, I overnight shipped from Amazon to our friend's house these like shoe, really like weird looking blue shoe coverings that I think you're supposed to wear in like, <laughs> hospitals or um, like restaurants and stuff just so that I could cover those. No way. And <laughs> so my wife was like, you can't do that. Like, <laughs> seriously, that's going to look so ridiculous. So I, I did, um, because I do have this extra bag, I am bringing along some tennis shoes in the end, even though I only need them for possibly just a few hours on this trip. Wow. Um, but I feel like it should be do a in case. branded frequent miler uh, shoe slippers. <laughs> yes, Ooh, there we go. <laughs> shoe thingies. I'm um, intrigued. I'm intrigued. Well, that brings us kind of out of time. Uh, we did have one commenter say, I kind of wish you guys were doing this on TikTok so I could see you all doing those TikTok dances. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> We are going to halfway try to start a TikTok throughout this also, but we'll see how that goes. I'm not, not hyping that up too much because we've already got a lot we're trying to do. So, All But I right. think that wraps us up. It does. So thanks everyone for joining us and we'll be back sooner than we would normally. So we, we had planned to do the first Wednesday of every month, but we're going to do, I think it's the last Wednesday of this month, if I'm remembering right, the next ask us anything so that we can answer questions about our trips. We'll, we'll all be, uh, it'll all be fresh in our minds because we'll have just come back the uh, previous weekend. So we hope to see you again then. Bye everyone. All right.